Hi, it's Diane from So Batique. And today I would like to talk to you a little bit about our cotton jersey knit and some of the things that I do to make successful garments and other home decorating projects using this fabric. First, a little bit about the fabric. Our jersey knit is 72 inches wide. I'm holding up a fold line over here and the cut edges over here. And it's 100% cotton. So if I would probably estimate, if, if by stretching it, there's probably 10 to 20% stretch and it only stretches around you <laughs> and not on the grain line. So when you're wearing a garment um, out of the cotton jersey knit, it will obviously stretch around and we don't want it to stretch this way. So it does matter when you cut out your pattern pieces for a garment, which way you have them on, place them on your fabric when you're cutting them out. One thing that I do want to make mention of though, before we talk about laying out a pattern piece on the fabric or, um, or cutting out fabric scraps or cutting out anything is that I really recommend pre-washing the fabric. Cotton and a knit, they're both going to shrink and we want to make sure that we remove any of the shrinkage as well as this is a batik. So we want to make sure we get rid of any excess dyes and wax from the fabric before we cut out our pattern pieces and sew our garment. I do recommend Synthropol and Retain for any of your washing and care instructions. Um, I use Synthropol 98% of the time, and both of these products are from ProChemical, and we have them on our website individually or as a set. And um, it really does what we need it to do, which is to get rid of any of the excess dyes and wax from the fabric. I have a front load washing machine at home, and I do put a teaspoon or so of the Synthropol in my soap dispenser. I use a gentle cycle, warm water, rinse and warm water wash, and an extra wash cycle with it, and or rinse cycle with it. And then I put it in the dryer until it's almost dry. I use a medium temperature heat setting on my dryer. And once I take it out, I'll flatten it out and just let it dry a little bit um, and let it set, to be honest. I'm not a big proponent of um, ironing or pressing knit. If you have to, you have to. Um, but before I lay out a pattern, I really want to make sure that it's flat and, and I just lay it out that way um, to make sure that it's dry. So that's a little bit about the care. It's very simple, not very different from any other fabric that you would be bringing into your home to wash. With our fabric, being 72 inches wide, it is a lot of fabric to work with um, when you're laying out a pattern. And most patterns for Jersey Knit are written for 60 inch wide fabric. So you, you can play around with your pattern layout a little bit before starting because you can probably get away with a little less fabric than you would if you had only 60 inch wide fabric. So 72 is really kind of a bonus. 12 inches can give you a lot of extra space to work with on your pattern, depending on the garment that you're making. When I lay out a pattern, let's talk about that for a little bit. When I lay out a pattern, I am always doing a little bit of pre-planning as well, but I work from one of the cut edges or salvages at a time. Many garment patterns have a back that's on the fold or a front or one of the pieces is on a fold. And when you're laying out a jersey knit, we always wanna make sure that we're straight on grain. Now, when you're working with a cotton or a woven fabric, most of the time you're holding up the selvages, making sure that those are straight. You take a cut over on, on one side so you know where you're working from and that you're straight. With the knit, it's just a little bit different. I will lift up my fabric, get a little bit of air under it, and I'll lay it down to the 
length of fabric that I need to cut out my pattern piece. I'll double check to make sure that the knit, the weave of the knit is running right along the fold line. And if I look at this, I can tell that it's not here. And so I have to work with it a little bit to get it so that the grain line is right along that fold. Your, your cut edge or your salvage edge here might not look straight. Your cut edge over here might not look straight and that's okay because the only thing that matters is the grain line. And the way I reference that is if you've ever purchased a t-shirt, put it in the wash and afterwards you can't fold it because it's wonky. It was because it's not cut properly and not laid out properly. So take the time this is the time to make that difference. The other thing that I do, if I'm not working with a fabric or a pattern piece that's on the fold, I, it, and it doesn't matter if it's single ply or double, like your sleeves, as an example, you'll lay out the pattern piece and I pin the grain line. That's there, I put a, a pin in one side and then I'll try to match and trace that black grain line to see where it is along the weave of my fabric because we still want to make sure that it's straight on grain. Your pattern piece might not be straight. It might be crooked. It doesn't matter. It needs to be straight. So take the time to do that before you mark your pattern piece or before you cut it out with a scissor or rotary cutter, whatever your favorite is. I do use a rotary cutter sometimes, but most of the time I'm using a scissors. That's a little bit about laying out your fabric and um, cutting it out. I think the point of it is really pay attention to your grain line and be able to see your grain line. And you'll have a really, really well hanging garment when you're all done. Okay. One of the things I really like to do um, is I like to do a lot of piecing of projects and using up scraps that I might have or smaller pieces of fabric that we have available and add a little bit of interest to my garments. And one right behind me here is our patchwork top. This is actually the Lark pattern and I created the patchwork fabric for the front and then I laid out the pattern piece on top of it to get this design. The sleeves are all one fabric and the back is one fabric and I believe I started with 10 inch strips of each one of these fabrics. I think it's like six different fabrics but it's only a portion of the 72 inches across. You don't need 10 inches by 72. That's a lot of fabric. It, I believe it was 10 inches by about 24 inches that I put in here to make this garment. And we also have these project kits or patchwork kits on our website as well with a guide to how to make patchwork of your own. But when you're working with small pieces of fabric like that, I have a couple right here and I'm starting with one that's kind of small, but it'll come out of your, and you have to wash them as well, wash and dry them and regardless of their size, but take them out of the dryer and lay them flat. Um, they will naturally curl on you because there will be a cut edge to it. And if there is a curl, you can see that here. What I, I have two little things that I do. First of all, this still has the, the um, stitched cut edge salvage to it. So what I do is I will take my ruler and rotary cutter and I actually get rid of that. I don't want the, that bump on there because I'm gonna be using a ruler to cut my shapes. So for example, these are a tumbler. Um, other projects I have just done strips like our um, bed scarf and pillow sham, that's out of Jersey Knit and it's just straight strips of fabric. 
But when you have a curl in it, and you'll see that, of course, the Jersey Knit does curl, and it curls, the cut edge here will curl to the right side of the fabric. I cut off this um, stitched salvage on this side, and it is going to naturally curl to the back side. But what I do with my ruler is I will just slide it along the fabric until I can get the curl to curl back down. And then I will cut a straight edge, peel that fabric away before moving my ruler, and just slide it forward. Now I have a jersey knit piece of fabric that is not curling, it's sitting there, <laughs> and then I can start cutting, measuring and cutting my strips. As if it was a normal woven fabric. Okay. The other trick I have, see if I can find another piece of fabric here. is, okay, this is a really pretty blue called Lake. What I also do, and I watched a really very clever YouTube a uh, long time ago, and they used tape. So keep tape near you. Masking tape, painter's tape, something that's really easy to stick onto your um, cutting mat. I know you're laughing now. You're going to use tape. Well, it's sometimes it curls just too much and you can't get your ruler along the edge very well and very easily. So, and if your pieces are too small, this also helps you use more of the fabric. I will take a little bit of, of tape. I'm just going to show you one little sample here, but if you tape it along the edge, and you can do sections and sections. Let's see here. If I can get another little piece. I was gonna have these cut off so that we could use them. And then by taping that down, you can use your straight edge. Get as close as you can and cut. And again, I don't move my ruler until I've removed the fabric that I cut off. Now there is extra tape here. Leave it there. Cut your shapes and then remove the tape. The tape comes off easily. So that's how I kind of can fiddle and work with the Jersey knit, even if it's curling on you. It's just very, very simple to do. I also have a couple of pieces here and a sample of the exact same front that we used on that top. See how small these pieces can be? Um, and they will curl on you a little bit. But if you, see this one's curling because I think I've been playing with it too much. but. Once you have all of your shapes cut out, and I would just stack them up until I'm ready to sew. And then you treat any kind of patchwork of a Jersey knit, um, just like you would if it was a cotton or any other woven fabric. And I stack them up. Here's my little tumbler piece. And for this particular piece, I used a serger. I used a two needle, so a four thread overlock, and just stitched like I would if it were a conventional sewing machine. And created this. <laughs> this is a patchwork piece of fabric. Here's the back, and it is 
you'll see all the surged edges of the fabric. And I used this to cut out the front of that Lark t-shirt. You simply mark the center, lay out your pattern piece and cut it out and you have the front. You, now, one thing I do want to say is you don't need to use a serger on Jersey Knit. It curls, it doesn't fray. And so you don't necessarily need to finish the edges of it. I just really love to do that. I have a serger and so I do use it anytime I'm working with a garment fabric of any kind. And so that's just my natural go-to. If I were to put the collar on here, the neckline, I'd finish the edge with a serger and then top stitch with my conventional sewing machine. So cutting it out is simple. Piecing it is simple. One thing that makes it simple though is the right needle. I use either a jersey needle or a stretch needle. They are a ballpoint needle, they're not a sharp. So they're going to work with between the threads and the weave of your um, knit very, very beautifully. And so you definitely use the stretch or the jersey needle. If you happen to forget what needle you have in your serger or your sewing machine and it's not sewing properly, make sure that you switch it out because it could be a sharp needle or a microtex or something that should be used with a woven fabric instead. So definitely make sure that you're using the right needle. I really like either an 8012 for the needle size or this one is a 7511. I don't go any smaller than that in the needle for a knit simply because it works really well with the sergers that I have. And um, I think it just gives, oops, gives a very even stitch to it. So, um, but use either machine. If you're using your conventional sewing machine, when you're working on patchwork like this, um, there's two stitches that's on your, that are on your sewing machine. Typically with a knit that has a lot of stretch, you want to use the stretch stitch. That looks like a lightning bolt on your sewing machine. You'll see it right, you'll kind of wonder why did I ever have that? That's a stretch stitch. And it is off-centered so that it won't, your threads, if you were to pull it any direction, your threads are gonna work with the knit, it's not going to tear your threads. If you were to use a straight stitch, you're, you have a lot more pull and pressure on that thread um, which we don't want to have. We want to be using the stretch stitch. However, I'm going to say a however here. When I did this patchwork on another jersey knit top, I used the simple straight stitch for one reason. I knew that that portion of my garment, the front, was not going to be stretched or pulled. And so it didn't matter to me that I used the straight stitch. If I am using or working with the knit, of course, and on a shoulder or your arm, I use a stretch stitch if I'm not on my serger because there is pressure on that point because we're putting our garments on and we're going to stretch those portions of the garment, okay? And I'm sure there's many, many, many tips and te techniques that others have um, learn from everybody. These are just some that I have learned when I'm working with my own Jersey knit. The other topic I want to talk about is interfacing. I use here um, in the store, a it's called French Fuse, and it is a polyester knit that is going to stretch with your knit. I found that this really is a nice 
It's very, very lightweight and it comes in both white and black. And I will put the interfacing and your patterns are going to have places for you to use your interfacing, which is a traditional um, collar facing. The front facing of your garment are typically where you're going to have recommended interfacing. I also use the interfacing or some form of stabilizer in uh, my hem actually of a garment and the cuff of your sleeve and I do use stay stitching in the seam along the shoulder and we also have a uh, separate stay stitch um, on our website. Oh. Just lost my train of thought. Um, so we, all of those products are there and our interfacing is on our website as well. When we put together our fashion duos, for example, you can buy a pack of Jersey Knit for that top plus a pattern. It'll come with interfacing um, if it needs it and any other notions when they're needed specifically for that garment. So you'll get used to, if you've purchased our fashion duels, you'll get used to seeing the interfacing that we recommend to be used with each one of the fabrics that we, that we offer. So those are a few of the tips and techniques. And like I said, you will hear more and um, options and from ideas from other people as well as you learn to sew and and these are just simple techniques and tips that i have for working with our 72 inch wide cotton jersey knit so i hope you've enjoyed this little video and definitely shop our website at sewboutique.com send us an email at services at sewboutique.com give us a call or hopefully you will like this video on YouTube and enjoy.